I would now like to introduce our next 8th grade speaker, Will Flannery. Good morning, faculty and students. First, I would like to thank my mentors, Mr. Parker and Mr. Rossi. It was a morning in the spring of 2011, and I was in my kitchen. My parents gathered my sisters and I in the living room and told us the news. They both had solemn looks on their faces, and my parents were tongue-tied, so it took them a while to spit it out. My mom had cancer. I thought no matter what happened, my mom would be here, but in this moment, I realized tragedy can happen no matter what you think. She's one of the healthiest people I know, yet she's the one that gets cancer. Why her? Why her out of all people? My mom survived because she took care of herself. She got the cancer because of a gene and got rid of it because she is healthy and takes care of herself. Oddly enough, I wasn't the slightest bit scared. It was a very acute cancer that had been caught early due to my mom's awareness. To this day, I do not know why I wasn't scared. Maybe it was the reassurance in my parents' voices when they told me it would be okay. Maybe it was because I was in so much shock. Whatever the reason, it didn't, it didn't give me the slightest scare. But it did make me realize something. Family came first. I was almost a teenager at that point, and most teenagers just spend time with their friends, but I aspired to be different. I tried to spend time going to the grocery store with my mom instead of sitting on the couch at home doing nothing. This transcends to the rest of my family as well. Instead of going to a friend's house, I will sit and watch the 49ers games with my dad. And while my sisters Ava and Celia, well, yeah, <laughs> it's confusing. I take pride in this close relationship with my parents. When my mom got cancer, she told me one thing that has stuck with me since. We don't know how long we have left, so we have to make it count. This phrase of hers has really stuck with me, but this saying hasn't just affected my family life. It has affected my relationships with my friends, my soccer, and of course, my dog. We have to make it count. My grandparents are also a big part in my belief of making it count. It could be a long gap of time before I see them. I see my grandparents that live in Annapolis about every two weeks. I see my grandparents from England once or twice a year, and I see my granddad about every three months. No matter what the time gap is, I try to make it count. When my grandparents are in town, I will usually spend a day having lunch with them, going shopping, or just spending some good quality time talking. Making it count applies to my passion and commitment to soccer as well. Who knows what will happen, so make your time out on the field count. When I walk onto the field, I do it with this phrase in mind. It might not be your day, but at least you can say you gave it 100% and have no regrets. I have to make it count for my teammates, who work as hard as they can, and my coaches, Joe, Mr. Doss, and Coach Till. <laughs> I've put in countless effort to develop my different teams. It is my personal duty to do whatever I can to support those around me. To conclude, something your mom said to you years ago might not have an effect on you, but it certainly leads me to live my life the way I do and do the things I do. I might not be perfect at it. No one is. All I can do is try my best and make it count. Thank you. I would like to introduce our next speaker, Ms. Camp. <laughs> 